speaking of your um f- your fallen comrades, um rest in peace to them by the way and um thank them I thank them for their service. Um what what do you remember most about them and how they um played an impact that had an impact on you as one a person, at two um as a fighter and three as like a captain of like your whole your whole your whole ship um like you know like uh there's different one one marine in particular like you know i lost a lot of friends out there but like the one that always um is close to home is uh nick white um like you know he was under my charge like you know it was my job to try to bring him home and i failed in that mission uh but yeah he was great just a great guy like he um he's actually the one that i uh I I credit to him to introducing me into anime, mm-hmm. uh, like you know, because when we're like when we're not on patrol and we're not like uh, on posts and stuff like that, like we had like one TV in our um, in our hooch, and like you know like so we're, like everybody had to use like the same TV and stuff like that, and he kind of like forced uh, forced us to watch a bunch of uh, like Naruto, and everybody got hooked on Naruto, and like you know he's the one that introduced me to that. Um, actually the day that we lost him is actually the day of my fight too. Mm-hmm. So like, but like I've always used like that. And that was one of the biggest parts where I, I got it. Like one of my motivating factors as a fighter is like, I want to do everything I can to like make those guys proud and make like, like feel like, like, you know, they're, their sacrifice wasn't in vain. Like I want to do something that would make them proud, mm-hmm. and I know for a fact they they would all be down with, you know, with with my fighting and like how my career has gone. And like you know, I know they'd be happy and proud, like of that. Like you know, I know like because uh, we still have a reunion every year. Mm-hmm. Um, heck, they were wasn't able to go last year because I was actually fighting on it. But it was cool because everybody got to watch it together. That's that's uh, it was when I fought uh, Derek Perez. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, like, and I called up. I was like, I was like, how'd you guys like that? that? And like, you know, they were going nuts and they're all piss drunk. <laughs> so like, you know, it's uh, like, it's always been a motivating factor to me. Like, you know, like they, they've always pushed me like, you know, and then like, you know, it seems like a, a big, big uh, theme in my career has been like, you know, getting pushed, pushed uh, to great heights by ghosts. Like, you know, now, like this year with my dad, mm-hmm. Like, you know, that was a huge motivating factor in, like, you know, how the success that I've had in Bare Knuckle. Transitioning from MMA to Bare Knuckle, how is that? How was that, like, is that, like, a culture shock to you, or was it all was it all the same? Um, You know, like, combat sports, like, you know, they all have a sim- similar vibe, but it's different. Um, But, it, like, a different, like, but they have a different energy to them, too. Mm-hmm. Um. But like I was, I was really very accustomed to it. Like you know, training Taylor for, for her bare knuckle fights and stuff like that. So like you know, I've been, uh, you know, I've been coaching it before I actually, before I actually got in there and d- did it, which is, you know, might be a little bit backwards, but mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it seemed to work out very well. It's um, like you know, so like it just it 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 fit pretty smoothly. Do you think that um, MMA? Uh, do you, which one do you think is tougher, bare knuckle or MMA? Um. Cause I fight and I do MMA and I'm like, man, I ain't jumping. I would, I wouldn't do that <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, here's the thing: the fight camps for bare knuckle are easier. Uh-huh. Like the, uh, but the fights can be way tougher. Uh-huh. Um, where like you know, like when you're training for MMA, like one you've got to do like five different sports, Crazy. and it's but it's really the wrestling and the grappling uh-huh. that wears on your body so uh-huh. so much. Like, you know, that's what's going to get you sore. That's that's where, like, a lot of the injuries happen. Like, you know, like where you're just, like, you know, with bare knuckle, you're, you're training, you know, predominantly boxing, uh-huh. which is a lot less toll on the body. But, like, you know, those bare knuckle fights, like, you know, when, like, after the Scoggins fight, like, uh-huh. you know, I still have scars. I still have, my pupils don't dilate the same <laughs> anymore. Like you know, my hands my hands were messed up for a good month. Yeah. Like, like it, it definitely like so. You can have like you can all have it like, like you can have all the damage like spread over mm-hmm. like amount of time or all all in oh, one what? night. <laughs> so you so you can't re- you can really pinpoint which one is a hard like harder per se. It's just respectively they have their hard points. Yeah, like you know, just 
plus you know it just depends on the fight like you know right. uh like you can have a Scoggins fight where all my other fights were first and second round knockouts mm -hmm. you know where i didn't get didn't have to get banged up too much right yeah depends it's, depends on the night depends on the opponent so if i really probably i already know the answer but i'm your most memorable fight within bare knuckle is probably the Scoggins fight um yeah like you know it's it's pretty close between that and like you know when i won the belt but um mm. definitely definitely got to go with the Scoggins fight it was just it was just like the ultimate dog fight like it was fight of the year yeah. it was you know it was uh, um very cathartic experience for me like you know like you know my dad with my dad passing a week and a half before the fight uh like you know it was it was an opportunity one like tra training for the fight was definitely what ca helped keep me sane like you know my dad wouldn't let me pull out of the fight mm -hmm. um but like you know i was going straight from the gym like staying at my parents house taking care of my father you know he was in mobile immobile at that time mm -hmm. so like you know it was just uh it kept me kept me sane just like gave me something to focus on and then like you know with the insanity of the actual fight where mm -hmm. like you know we were just we just got after it um you know it allowed me to just pour all that emotion into the fight and just empty the tanks mm -hmm. and i like i just needed to get it all out and so with that with that mindset like what where do you have to go to push forward to push past yourself to say like you know man i know i'm hurt I know he's like we like you really got to dig like the I found like for me I when I I already knew you as a fighter but I found a new respect for you as a fighter after that Scoggins after that Scoggins fight because of I feel like where you had to pull from and how how brutal that fight was I was like oh fuck this <laughs> motherfucker is a dog so where do you go and how do you pull from that like where do you like where do you pull what are you pulling from like you know one like there's no there's not a motherfucker on this planet that can break me like after, after all the stuff that I've been through like you know when I when I when I lost Nick like mm -hmm. I had to go fucking to the same place do the same thing like we had to go back on patrol the next day in the same area dismount and just stand there like you know he was killed by a sni like a sniper mm -hmm. and we had to go like just to show them that like you know fuck you you ain't fucking breaking us mm -hmm. we're here like you know tears are pouring out my face like there's still blood on the concrete like mm. but like if i can if i can do that there's nothing that i'm like there's no motherfucker that's gonna break me in a break me in a ring like that's a that's a fist fight they mm -hmm. patted that motherfucker down before we even got in there mm -hmm. He ain't got no strap on him. Let's let's go. Let's go. Like you know, um, like so. It's there's there's never even a question of stopping, um, to me. But it definitely uh definitely doesn't make it easy on my on my students. Like you know, I, I remember even coming after the cage. I was like, I was like, y'all have no fucking excuse ever. I was like, you know, if I go in there, like, <laughs> if I go in there and set that example, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to hear shit. Like you know, you got no like. I don't give my guys many excuses because, like, you know, that's one of the good things about leading from the front. Like, I'm never going to ask any any of the guys that fight for me to do anything I'm not willing to do myself. Mm -hmm. And I've done it all at this point. Right. So, like, yeah, they... Like no, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all good. It's all good. But you know, you know that was one of the fights that I was like, you know, I was like, oh my god, this this motherfucker just took my respect to a new level. I was like, there's nobody else you're gonna put in front of him that's gonna that's gonna make it that type of fight that he just was in. So I was like, okay, so when when is the championship coming? Fast forward, we go to we fight in reggie barnett which i was i was really excited for that fight because reggie barnett is actually the person who introduced me to bare knuckle um when i first saw his fights so i was like damn this motherfucker got hands and this motherfucker keith came in there and showed him what's what so how was how was that call how was that process for that fight um like you know i had kind of uh you know like when, that was part of uh, part of my uh, draw to uh, bare knuckle too. I, I knew I could be a, a big star in it pretty quickly, mm -hmm. just with my resume and stuff like that. Um, I know they were like you know searching for challengers and stuff like that. Reggie, you know Reggie had been a big big name in the 
in the sport for a long time, mm-hmm. like since since I think it started, uh, right? The first one or the second one, right? Um, so, and then like I'd kind of like I'd taken like a, a quick fight, a quick fight, uh, the one in Albuquerque against uh, Perez. So like to try to move myself into the spot, the spot like you know to get that title fight. So once I got the uh, word, like you know, I was I was amped. But like you know, I knew I had a big big task task in front of me. Uh, but like you know, I was ready, and I, I I had a feeling that I was gonna show him something different, and you know, he wasn't gonna like being share, sharing a ring with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had that, and how. Did you when when in the fight did you know that you 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 broke him? Like was there like a point to where it's like it was oh, the yeah, f- it, was, it was it wasn't even the first knockdown. It was the first time I landed solid, uh-huh. and I just saw a look in his face, and it was just like, and then like you know, uh, and then I like you know, and then like shortly after that, I dropped him the first time. Uh-huh. Like I didn't know it at the time, but like but I could tell like I could tell he was he was. He was like it, it had him shook, and then like it when I uh, rewatched the video, like he gets back to his corner and his like his dad's his coach, yeah. like you know he'd been boxing his whole life. Right. He gets back to his corner and his dad's like, "What are you doing in there?" He goes, "I don't fucking know." <laughs> like, like, so yeah, like I did, like d- after that first round, I think he was just mentally defeated. Mm-hmm. Dropped him tw- twice more in the uh, second, like one within like the first five. The first two seconds, uh, but two more, and then like he was he was done. Like, yeah, and that's why I was like, oh yeah, it's it's but, it's pretty much right. After this, I'm gonna just keep referring back to keep referring back to after that Scoggins fight. I'm like, if if the, you're not about to go there with Keith, then you might as well just hang I, it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you like, might as well just hang it up. If you weren't willing to die in there, you like. I, might as well just say, I was like, you might as well just hang it up. If you're not willing to take it there, you might as well just hang it up. Um, in greater, in lighter news with BKFC, Conor McGregor is now a partial owner. Partial or like he's part, yeah, he's part partial owner. owner. Like yeah, he's not the not, not he's the, not the president. Uh-huh. He's not the uh, majority. Owner. I, I don't know. If, uh, he's not the majority owner, but he's uh, but he's but now, he's a significant owner. He's a significant owner. How do you feel that's going to impact the the landscape of BKFC? Uh, huge, like, you know, like, you know, it's already one of the fast growing sports in the world right now. Uh, that's just gonna like, you know, hit the boosters on that. Like, you know, there's nobody, there's nobody in the business that like, you know, can promote a, promote a fight like, like Connor. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that's why, you know, he's, that's why he is who he is. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like, I think he's going to bring a lot of eyes on, uh, a lot of big sponsorship money. So he's going to bring more, like. So it, like I just see good things in the future, like you know, with his presence. Like you know, the guy guy also is a smart businessman, or or at the very least, he has smart business people behind him. Like you know, he's grown his proper twelve band, and now like uh, his beer company, um, mm-hmm. Forged uh, Forged uh, Stout, is like the um, official um, drink sponsor for BKFC. Mm-hmm. So like he's ready, bit like bringing in. Bringing in big sponsors, bringing in big revenue, and bringing uh, lots of eyes on. Like, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for this sport. I'm excited. Uh, like, God forbid if he ever actually does a fight. Oh. And I better be on the card. <laughs> yeah. Put Keith on the uh, card. I need Connor that, I need that red panty money. <laughs> right. Let's go. Yo, bring that. But bring my boy Keith on that because he going, but he's going to put on the show. Yeah. Uh, it's going. It's going to be a fun fight, and you. We got a fight um, coming up. June sixteenth, twenty first, twenty first. That's what I'm thinking of, my boy Shamiks. Um, June twenty first, um, Keith fights Alberta B- Bias B- Blas. Blas. How do you feel about that fight? In your first title stand, first title defense. How do you feel? Um, you know he's a he's a dangerous opponent. Like you know he hasn't uh, like he's he's pretty untested. Like and that's that's always a problem. Like you know when you're going against somebody as seasoned and. And just mean and nasty as me, mm-hmm. um, but like you know, he won. Like anybody, I, I've got respect for anybody that's willing to get get into a ring with me. Mm-hmm. Um, like you know, I think he's he, you know he's gonna be young, confident. You know, he's had a uh, had a good, you know, had a string of first round knockouts. Yeah, you know, so his confidence is gonna be high. You know, he's gonna try to he's gonna try to 
test me and get me out of there early. But as soon as uh, as soon as he figures out, you know, I'm a different beast. I'm a different dog. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think he's I don't think he's seen this breed before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna look to take a chunk out of his ass. <laughs> um, and like see see how see how willing he is to like cause he I, I, in my opinion he hasn't really been in a bare knuckle fight yet he's hit people bare knuckle mm-hmm. but like he hasn't had half his face coming off and like you know his knuckles swollen to swollen to to, to the fact that you can't even make fists uh-huh. like he hadn't he hadn't been in that type of fight yet right. we'll see we'll see how you know we'll see how game he is like you know if it gets to that point. But you know he's he's also got to worry about my power. I hit hard. I hit nasty, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna hit you often. I'm gonna hit you from different angles. Like I'm gonna be elusive. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that footwork. Um, like you know I, I didn't I didn't stumble into that to that belt. I worked for it, mm-hmm. and now I'm gonna work just as hard to keep it. Like you know as as because that's one of the true tests of a champ. Like the defenses. And, where, and with this defense, where do you think that he ranks in all of your opponents as far as skill set? Um, I've definitely fought more skilled opponents. Mm-hmm. You know, Scoggins you know, was a former top ten UFC uh, fighter. Um, you know, Reggie Barnett was like you know one of the like you know he was one of the faces. If 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 they were making like a Mount Rushmore of BKFC right now, he'd be one of the faces that you see on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, you know, I've fought some pretty high level, significant guys over, over the course of my career. Like, you know, I've fought like, you know, there are plenty of current world champions, former world champions on my resume. Uh, you know, I don't think necessarily he's, he's at the level of some of a lot of those guys, but he's a dangerous opponent. Like, you know, he, especially, He's got that belief in himself to where, you know, if he's got the confidence to think, oh yeah, I just need to land that one shot. Like, you know, he can be, he can be dangerous. It can be a, you know, it can be a, a tough fight. But like, if I'm conscious, guess what? I'm gonna keep getting back up. And like, so even if, even if he magically happens to land that, land that magical shot, mm-hmm. you know, I'm gonna pop up like the Undertaker and. <laughs> And knock the shit out of them yeah. some more. Right. And so we, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to this fight, Keith. Um, I know I don't think he's gonna be willing to go where you're gonna go. I think you're gonna have another def- title title defense on your hands. Um, I'm excited. Um, my last question for you is: um, you being a fighter and a coach, which one do you rank is harder? Um. Like they both have different uh different challenges. Um emotionally I I get so much more nervous when my when my people fight. Like mm-hmm. especially cuz there's just not like not that degree of control. Like you know, I can always scream at you and hope you do <laughs> do what I tell you. Yeah. Uh I like, you know, I can slap you upside the head and, and, and like when you get back to the corner but but like you know, I know the work that like you know they're putting in, and I've like I've done everything right sometimes, and still getting the wrong result, and that that it sucks to lose a fight. Like it is embarrassing. Like you know, to get to get your ass beat on that na- like national TV or mm-hmm. even in front of a a crowd of your friends and family and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like you know, it takes a like it like it takes a toll on you. Like you know. Like, you know, a lot of times you go into a little bit of depression for a little while. Like, you know, it just, like, I know how bad it is when, when that happens. And I, like, I want to, like, you know, I feel like a papa bear. And, like, I want to, like, you know, like, keep my fighters from that. Like, you know, I know I can handle it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if I go out there and I have a b- bad night, like, I've been there before. I've been through it. Like, you know, I know, I know how to handle it. It sucks, but, um... It just, like you know, I'm I'm empathetic with them, like from that, like you know, especially the fir- like especially the first time you lose, it just it hits different. It's, mm-hmm. You know, it's like popping your cherry and anything else. Right. It's, yeah, like you always remember your first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. 
but, but but yeah, I feel you. I feel you, Coach. I uh, man, I appreciate you for coming on the podcast. Um, I'm excited for your next fight, BK BKFC 135 champion Keith the Rockstar Richardson coming on the podcast. Thank you so much, Keith. Where can they follow you at? Where can they follow your journey? At? Um, uh, Rockstar uh, MMA on uh, Instagram. Um. Now I hadn't started that OnlyFans yet, but right. it's it's coming. Like it's, you know, coming. it's, it's under construction. I can, I you know, I, I, I'm just trying to build up a good uh good repertoire of like helicopter videos, and right. stuff like that. So, but like, keep, just, keep just, the, just keep looking out for it. Like you know, follow the Instagram from now, and like you know, you'll. It, you'll see you'll see you'll, you'll see, see you'll eventually see you'll see more hey <laughs> hey follow follow the push event podcast on all platforms uh we're um on youtube so you can like share subscribe you can follow us on all um streaming platforms that you listen to your podcast make sure you follow everybody um shout out to my production um zay you can follow him at zay dot don't miss and big zay underscore i'm right zay big zay big zay one underscore and we about to get out of here. Thank you so much, Keith, the Rockstar no Richardson, for coming up here. Shout out, shout out to you. And uh, we look forward to your championship. Appreciate it, brother. Let's go.